Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. Hey, you know what? Let's talk about Jupyter Notebooks. This is um, a new technology. There's a lot going on with it. I just talked about them in a, in a video recently because the uh, Azure Data Studio update just released support for notebooks. And I, I'm, I'm actually at a loss on, on, on fully how to describe what's possible here because I don't actually fully understand it yet. I'm, I'm really kind of getting this, this under my fingernails kind of feeling about it right now. And, and, and I'm digging in and trying to figure out how to, how to really grasp it. But what I am getting so far is really amazing. Now I've already mentioned it before. I'm going to mention it again. Uh, I've got a link down below. I'll put it even a little, uh, tab up above. Um, Gianluca Sartori has got a fantastic example of a notebook using Glenberry's uh, DMV scripts. So it's definitely worth something you should check out. But in the meantime, I'm just going to kind of walk you through getting started with notebooks. I'm going I'm to fire one up. We're going to go to Azure Data Studio. I'm going to show you some markdown. I'm going to show you some of the queries and stuff. I'm going to show you how I achieve the little tiny bits that I'm doing so far and then how I'm working with it and what I'm discovering. And this is very much, very much introductory. Um, I'm introducing myself more than I'm introducing you to this, in, the, to these concepts, but I figured what the heck, let's explore it a little bit together and see what's going on. If you've got questions, uh, please post them down in the comments below. I will do my best to try to find answers for you. If you've got suggestions, <laughs> Please post them in the comments down below. I'll do my best to um, get you some answers. In the meantime, let's go take a look at it and let's try a few things and um, we'll do some experimentation and you know you can see what's happening and, and maybe get some understanding of why I'm starting to get very excited about this. Um, there's a whole slew of people I know that are already talking about, well, I'm gonna, I'm st I'm gonna convert some of my presentations so I'm ju just using notebooks. Um, I'm going to start doing some of my maintenance just with notebooks. We're going to be doing our checklists with notebooks. We're doing run books through our notebooks. The, the, the possibilities here are large, broad, deep, um, wide. I mean, this is, this is a lot of stuff could be happening here. I'm not saying it should or will, but it's looking really interesting, very interesting. So let's explore the space together a little bit and see what's up. Let's get started. I've got here a SQL Server instance running on a Docker container. So I'm connected up to um, SQL Server 2019. I've got a database, uh, AdventureWorks 2017, that we can run queries against. It's a, a full restore of the AdventureWorks database inside of a container. So we can run queries against it anytime we want to. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to get started on notebooks. So file, and it's got it right at front, new notebooks. Um, there's also the Control Shift P. And you could always type in notebook and there's new notebook and even it's control shift N to get a new notebook. So remember control shift P is your way to get commands inside of the Azure data studio. So to get in there and start making stuff happens for notebooks, you can see what's going on with that. So it's easy enough. Now, when we've got the notebook set up, the first thing you want to look at up, up here is the kernel. Now there's various kernels that you can use and it's going to mean how the code is configured when you run the code. We'll get to that. And also it's got attachments, so you can connect to particular things. Now I'm right now I'm connected to 192.168.1.8, which is my local IP address, which is the local container running. Um, there's a whole bunch of ways you could get these things set up. Don't sweat that right now. That's, that's another issue. The contain, I'm sorry, the notebook itself is right here and we've con we can add code or we can add text. Now let's start off with text because presumably we're building a notebook for a presentation or we're building a, some type of run book or, or maybe even a troubleshooting guide that people can go and run queries against their server and data can come back and then they can store all that in the notebook and then ship the notebook to you. So you're going to want to be able to, you know, tell them, you know, trouble, troubleshooting guide, right? This is a troubleshooting guide and you can add more text. So we can add another text field and start typing, you know, this is the first paragraph of my troubleshooting guide. And 
And if we click out here, you can see that each one of these things is like it is. But the issue you're going to run into is this is really, really ugly. I mean, this is appallingly ugly. So it, it's not readable. It's going to be problems. So what we have to do is we have to start using Markdown. Now, there's different various places you can go and try to get some Markdown cheat sheets. Um, I'm currently on Medium. They've got an IBM Watsa Data um, Jupyter cheat sheet. And the interesting thing is, is not all of it works. So for example, the first thing we can do is we go in here and if we double click, it'll reopen the editor and we can say, well, hang on, make that a first level um, title, you know, a heading, second level, third level, fourth level. And that works fine. So we'll leave that alone. Um, now this is, you know, our introductory paragraph, but we also have, you know, whoops, what, what the heck happened? That was weird. All right. Let's just put this in and let's say that we wanted to, you know, emphasize it. Well, if you go back over here to our guide, emphasis can be underscore, underscore, or, you know, um, star, star. So let's go with star, star. Okay, well, that worked that time. It doesn't always work, I've found. And that worked that time. Well, gosh. Last time I tried this, that didn't work. I must have been doing something wrong. But we can keep doing that. And as long as you've got some separation, then it creates a new paragraph. And then you can do what you want within that. So we could even say, you know, well, this one's going to be part of this. And oops, that doesn't work. So you actually have to break it apart like that. And if you then wanted this one to also be emphasized, we'd have to come down here and do this. Now you can do that, but you'll notice it's not a new paragraph anymore. It needs a double line before it becomes a new paragraph. Okay? So those of you who like double space after your period, well, just hit double return and you've got a new paragraph. Okay? That's how that's going to work from now on. Let's go back over and look at some of the markdown stuff too. Um, you can set up monospace fonts. You can decide you want line breaks. You can put your own line break in with BR. And this is where things get fun. You can start to modify the font. And so there's all kinds of stuff that you can do. Not all, all of it's going to work. Now, this is one that I found that the indenting didn't always work well. So let's try that again. Let's delete all of this mess. This, hang on. This should be, ah, oh, it did work this time. Every time I've tried to set these things up and test them out, I've, I've seen some odd behavior. I suspect what it is, is this. Does that change it? No, it doesn't. Now it's back. Wow, I tried some other formatting that wasn't working for me. So as I said, this is very much an exploration. So we're learning to, to get things in. Um, a dash sign with two spaces of it after it becomes a bullet. Okay, well, let's check that out. Oops, in the wrong spot. This is one thing I've noticed is I, as I'm reading here, I think, okay, well, let me type here to make the changes. But in fact, what I need to do is type up here. There's a bullet. Now, what happens if we go down here? make a bullet. All right, so it behaves roughly the same. And another. Okay, cool. Well, that's all working well, so that's good to see. Um, you can attach graphics. I've already done this once, um, something I was putting together internally for Redgate. I can't share it, um, but I was able to load some images out to a, a URL and then load it up that way. You will have to load it up to a URL, though, and make sure you do that. And we can obviously make more edits and stuff as we go along. Let's skip that for the moment. Let's talk about code. Now, right now, because I've got SQL up and because I connect up to a server, I can start typing. And you'll notice it's doing type ahead for me. It knows that it's in a query window. Now, this type ahead's not great. Watch this space. There might be a new uh, code completion, almost like a, a prompt, one might say, that's coming soon. So select star from 
sales. Does it know? Oh, it doesn't know which database we're in. We haven't picked the database. Aha. Now let's see if we can do this. Use VentureWorks 2017. Go. Now what happens? Select star. And no, I would never normally do star, but I'm just trying to. Oh, look it. Sales order header. Ha ha. Join sales dot sales order detail on. Oh, nothing. Hang on. Let's do this. As SOH. As, oops, as SOD. SOH dot. Does it? No, it doesn't tell us anything. Okay, cool. Sales order ID is equal to sod dot sales order ID. Cool. So with all that, we've got T-SQL. Obviously, we can now run it. Command completed. <laughs> it only completed the first one. Let's remove that. Oh. Displaying the top 5,000 rows. I don't see any rows. Hang on, let's get rid of this. There we go. Oh, okay, there, it all came back. Took a little while, but we got it. Awesome. So it's just displaying the first 5,000 rows. But now you can see that we're able to run this query and do all this stuff. Now, if we save this, it saves the output. So this is where, when we talk, start talking about troubleshooting guides on run books and the ability to take one of these things and put a query in here, and you saw it, including the use statement. If we can take the query and put it in here and run it and then save it with the data, that's great for like some kind of troubleshooting guide that you want to give to someone to run against their own machine or, or a run book of, of a series of scripts that you want to run and then you want an output. Show me what each one output to. And you can go in here and clear the output. And so it will reset it so you can rerun this again if you wanted to. Um, you know, if we only wanted to say select the top 50. So it'll run a little faster than it ran before. And then from there, I mean, it's just a question of adding more stuff. Um, we can insert markdown before or after. Um, we can do all kinds of fun stuff to, to you know, change the way this thing runs. And if we start saying, okay, well, hang on, I want to add some more code, but this time the code I want to add is Python. Now, I don't know enough about Python, and I have not yet configured my stuff for notebooks, so I'm not going to try to do that right now live. But we're able to do, do those things on the fly as we're getting things done. You're going to be able to write this up so that it's got code, not simply T-SQL code, but code embedded inside this runbook, and it will become a part of the troubleshooting guide runbook, whatever it is that you're going to try to do with it. So this is really exciting stuff, and this is why I'm, I'm emphasizing it, because it does give you a lot of functionality. Now, granted, if you're handing someone this PowerShell thing, they may need to, or sorry, Python, they need to have Python installed. I don't know that it's going to distribute the code with it. Obviously, this T-SQL code is just T-SQL. You're going to have to tell it where, it where to connect to, what database to use. There's going to be issues around this that you're going to have to think through and plan for. But, oh my God, the stuff that this opens up. And it does, at least at the moment, feel very simple, if simplistic. Um, as someone said to me, oh, we're working on a book and we're writing it all in Markdown because how geeky is that? Well, pretty darn geeky to have to go in and edit things by putting in, you know, little hashtags and, you know, a certain number of spaces to, to arrive at things. It, it's, that's a little too geeky for a lot of us. You know, that's why people use Word for, for their um, documents and stuff like that. But the fact is, is that Word is, does not have the ability to easily embed Python, easily embed T-SQL, capture the results, save them as part of the document itself, and then you can return those to another person. That opens up a lot of stuff. So, I mean, this is this whole concept of notebooks is really going to change the way we do a lot of things. So, hopefully, that was helpful. 
Um, don't go away. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. And again, if you've got questions or comments or suggestions on how we could you know, do some more stuff around these notebooks, let me know. Um, again, this was strictly introductory, strictly getting started. And so there's going to be more to come as I start to figure out what the heck's going on. Also, as I start to learn Python and all these other things that, that aren't in the old noggin yet, but I'm going to work on getting them up there. That's it. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.